Well, I think we've made a mistake in the past of thinking that our facial expressions are about us. I think our facial expressions are actually about you. When we make faces, we make faces in order to uh, influence you and how you respond to us in our current social interactions and the current context. So when you when you look at a person move move his or her face, what you're seeing is what they want from you uh, in the in the current social interaction. It's really it's really all about what they think of you and what they want from you. Well, you know, I think when people uh, through their facial expressions, through the way they talk to us, they tell us about themselves. Uh, but there's nothing special about the face. It's, it's everything they do with us tells us about themselves. It's the words they choose when they address us, the particular tone of voice they use when they address us, the kinds of ways they gesture, we're using their arms and so forth. They're telling us how they see themselves in relation to us, how they see uh, how I see you in relation to me, and that's communicated in many ways, not just my face, but everything, through my speech. And my face is part of my speech most of the time and when we socialize with other people. Yeah, I think when we're alone, we, the first thing we do is to repopulate our mental space with all the people in our lives or all the events that we're thinking about. And so we're never really alone. We're always interacting with others. We're interacting with pets. We're interacting with our computers. And then we are interacting with ourselves. We leave ourselves notes. We talk to ourselves and then we make faces while we're talking. And sometimes the talking is out loud when we talk to ourselves, but sometimes we take it inside. So we're always having conversations with ourselves. We're always having conversations with other people. We're always remembering conversations with other people. We're always thinking about the conversations we're about to have with other people. And so we're always being social. And the faces we make, I think, are always social, uh, unless proven otherwise. It's really, I think, the default should be that our faces are, are social tools that are used to influence other people, even when we're alone. It seems to me that much of life depends upon how we feel about it. I started off with the interest in how places make us feel. Some are distressing, some are fun, some are calming. Um, but interpersonal relationships, anger and resentment and so on all seems very important. And I also have a sense that we don't really understand our own emotions or the emotions of other people. So it seemed like something worth spending some time trying to learn about. No. <laughs> Partly, uh, my work tends to show that facial expressions and emotions are not anywhere near as related as traditionally they were thought to be. So we move our faces for many reasons, and we have an emotional life, but the two don't necessarily go all that much together. One of the things we're studying in our lab these days are how children come to understand the emotions of others, and we hope how they come to understand their own emotions. And so um, I think parents need to know better how a child is interpreting their own facial expressions, but also other what they say, what they do, and so on. And children, we can uh, help guide children to understand these sorts of things. So in the long run, we're hoping that this will have practical implications. La expresión facial es líquida de tal manera que adopta sus formas dependiendo del contenedor en el que se encuentra. El contexto social es la expresión y la expresión es el contexto social. De manera que la mejor forma de comprender las expresiones de las personas, lo que eh, transmiten a través de su rostro, es comprender el contexto en el que se producen y tener en cuenta que Nuestra cara es un instrumento que nos ayuda a gestionar nuestras interacciones y nuestro propio estado eh, psicológico eh, de una forma enormemente poderosa. La cultura es el contexto por excelencia y por ello existe una gran relación entre lo que es el macro contexto de la cultura y lo que es la interacción concreta en la cual estamos utilizando nuestro rostro para transmitir mensajes a los demás. Nuestros estudios muestran cómo la cultura interpreta un papel crucial en la interpretación de las expresiones y en la forma en la que eh, nuestro rostro es utilizado en distintos contextos, en distintas culturas. Eh, estudio las emociones porque realmente es un tema fascinante, es un gran reto para la psicología. Las emociones son un fenómeno opaco al lenguaje Es algo que evidentemente sentimos con una gran fuerza, pero tenemos grandes dificultades para expresar y interpretan un papel muy importante en nuestra vida. 
Eh, sin embargo, es enormemente difícil incluso definir qué es una emoción y hay incluso aproximaciones teóricas en este momento que cuestionan la existencia misma de las emociones desde un punto de vista científico. Por tanto, probablemente dentro del campo de la neurociencia y la psicología, el estudio de la emoción es uno de los grandes retos y es enormemente fascinante y atractivo. Y esa es la razón por la que he dedicado tiempo a trabajar en ello. Pues aunque parezca increíble, eh, una de las preguntas es muy básica, es cuál es la definición adecuada del de concepto de emoción o incluso si tenemos que prescindir del concepto de emoción y abordar los fenómenos que habitualmente asociamos con la emoción en nuestra vida cotidiana eh, de otra manera, con nuevas definiciones, eh, generar un lenguaje científico más preciso con respecto al concepto, a los conceptos y el otro gran reto en este momento es sintetizar muchas teorías que abordan la emoción de distintas perspectivas y que necesitan realmente un punto de integración.